So I've had a lot of people in the club actually, specifically, just the other day somebody asked me, how do I get more bud, more purple, more color, the pretty hues you see in some of the shit in high times, we'll say. So everybody knows we here at CLTV love some tasty bud, but at the end of the day, I think everybody's down for that bag appeal. How do you get that bag appeal? Multi-colors, purples, blues, pinks, all messed up in that pretty trichome frostiness. On well, this video, we're gonna be going over some different tips and tricks that you can implement in your garden to kind of tweak some color out of potential genetics you're already running in there. So if you're a subscriber, we really appreciate you. If you're not, make sure you hit the button below and the bell next to it will be notified every time we drop new content, which will be every Sunday, sometimes random days as well, and then live streams every Tuesday. When it comes to growing cannabis, a lot of people, they want their pretty bud, and I totally get it. Bag appeal is definitely a very important thing. Our mind kind of does a placebo thing and it plays tricks on us sometimes. My mind is playing tricks on me. But also, you can get very, very pretty bud that you grew your own way, you implemented some techniques, or else you just had the strains that actually had those colors and hues. Now myself, I've grown multiple straight up purple strains. Some that I didn't even have to influence, do anything to it. Others, I had to kind of manipulate, had to do a little bit more work. Now, those particular things I feel like could be beneficial for your plant and also could be hindering certain other areas. I've heard people kind of ruining some trichomes in certain points or ruining their terps in other areas. It just really depends how you implement this stuff. So just know going forward that these tips right here, take them with caution, make sure that you implement it properly, you do your research, you watch Cannabis Lifestyle TV, join the 420 Growers Club, and don't do anything stupid. Just think about it. just be smart. So first of all, all cannabis plants have pigments. All plants in general have pigments. And the main one that most people are familiar with is chlorophyll, the old borophyll. Green looking regular plant that you would see in all life. Now another pigment that plants contain is anthocyanin, which doesn't absorb the indigo spectrum of the sun, which will actually help that plant turn more purple naturally. So you'll see there's a lot of strains that are out there that are the GDPs or the purple Rex, different ones, the some of the old school strains some cookies. even. cookies. Yeah, certain cookie strains, there's different phenotypes even. Some of those strains are gonna naturally turn purple based on that pigment. If the sun isn't giving it or the lights that you have aren't giving it the spectrum that it's gonna be looking for, then you may not be getting that exact purple look. So you just gotta know, of course, like we mentioned, genetics plays a huge fucking role, you gotta pay attention. Yeah, I mean, Again, genetic shirt coming soon, I hope, because I'd rock yeah, it at this yeah, point. Yeah, I gotta get but, it. But um, I would say uh, GDP is one that should have some kind of purple hue to it. Um, if it doesn't develop that way, obviously the either the environment isn't right or it's just not a phenotype that necessarily turns that kind of purple. And he has a little tip. Temperature manipulation. Now, usually between day and night or between lights on and lights out, you wanna be able to fluctuate between 10 to 15 degrees. And now this can definitely help the hues. It can also help those trichomes too. Now I've seen people do this earlier on and too early is definitely not when you wanna do it. You wanna be working towards later in flower when you actually implement this. Make sure you don't go any further than 15 degrees at the most because you don't want that stress to be on a negative level. You want like positive stress, if that makes sense. Positive is good negative is bad you just don't want your temperature swing to be too great in any sense of the garden but obviously when you're trying to tweak and produce certain things to come out of that flower or that plant i mean think mother nature warmer days colder nights you got to kind of implement that inside your grow the next thing would be of course to let your plants fully finish and ripen all the way up some strains are going to get those hues later on especially in those last two weeks and maybe even last three weeks you may want to push that plant just a little bit more sometimes you just notice the leaves are getting those hues but you'll also see sometimes the buds get those. Now I've known with the um, the do, -si do that one definitely got that the blue blue. When I let that one go a lot longer, it definitely purpled out more. It got more of the pretty colors, more of that technicolor rainbow that I was looking for. Same with the headbanger, honestly, and same with the uh, regulate. When I let those ones go longer, I had more temperature manipulation in the room. I was able to get those prettier hues out of it. And then when you let it go longer, also those trichomes are gonna mature a little more. You don't want them to go too far, but you'll notice that they just get more enunciated. And when you got that contrast of the super sharp, vibrant trichomes with the darker back end, it really brings those hues out more. Yeah, there's obviously some contrast in color that will happen with bud naturally. These are just some things to take into account uh, that you can, again, implement, use, utilize in the garden uh, to a benefit of the color spectrum of your bud. Um, and again, you don't want it too wonky because um, if I'm, have time to look it up. There's a auto flower, one of the first auto flowers I did, or we ran in uh, one of my co grows, and uh, it was like a Technicolor rainbow bud. It was a little bit too uh, manipulated or a like, little fed, fed a little too hard. I mean, that can be another thing. You can you can spike your your uh, 
your MPK in your plant uh, and make it wonk out in not a necessarily uh, good way. Yeah, um, like even, let's say a deficiency with nitrogen, you'll notice on your leaves, you're gonna get more yellowing. You could potentially even see some of your buds getting that too. So if that's what you're looking for, I guess run that route. I, sure, whatever floats your boat. I wouldn't push too much with that. The light spectrum manipulation can definitely help you there. I've seen some people even changing with the light time of 10 and 14 hours for the flowering later on. Or Again, changing that's like bulbs stress. Oh, yes, from changing halides bulbs. to, or from HPS to halides. Yeah, or implementing um, halides in with your LEDs. You know, it just depends on what you want to implement. And also as a bonus, one that I actually read about recently, somebody was mentioning it in the club and then you mentioned someone walked in and mentioned it at the store, mm -hmm. was uh, basically the alkalinity playing into it, your pH is fluctuating that pH more. When you're looking later in flower, of course, you don't wanna do this too early on because your plant's absorbing those nutrients. But at the end of flower, when you're not so worried about that plant eating the shit up, acidic pH levels will bring out the reds, while alkaline brings out more of the blue tones. And again, they're not gonna be totally blue, but they're gonna get more of that indigo kind of slight purple look to it. And I wouldn't ever recommend doing this on like your whole crop. Try it on one or two plants, see how it works for what you're growing. Some plants are gonna react negatively to that stress, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, more finicky strains, I wouldn't be really trying to tweak their color if they're already having issues with just implementing your regular recipe for garden success. Don't go tweaking them just for the bag appeal, in my opinion. Uh, but as far as the, especially with the pH, because the pH, I know he's, you know, had a year of the garden where it was just pH off completely. Ah, uh, fucked. Uh, I haven't done any tricks or tips like that. I had a customer come in and ask about that last two weeks, you know, throwing it and getting reds and blues and this and that. And I was like, you are in the matrix, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. But in the bud he showed me was a very sparse bud that had had this kind of tweaking done to it, like very fox -taily, And I'm just like, I don't really give a shit about the color. I don't really want my bud to look like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's more where I went with it. Yeah, but. pushing too far. Like I said in the beginning of the video, there's a fine line. You don't want to push too far on this because you could potentially ruin that harvest. So try things little by little, implement it on a few plants, especially if you got multiple phenotypes. Good. See how, yeah, I'm good with that. See how many phenotypes, um, you know, respond to this training and to these different methods. Because again, some may be more finicky. Some may be little bitches about it. You just got to try to, you know, experiment, see how things work in your garden. If you're not a subscriber, I don't know what the fuck we did to have you be here this whole time and not subscribe. Come on now. Is it something we said? Make sure you get your stone of successful teas and a white tea if it's too hot because <laughs> it's hot as a motherfucker in here. Shit, to get your uh, CLTV headgear. Head over to the Cannabis Lifestyle TV apparel side of the website to get your CLTV gear to rep the Gromy style, the Gromy community. You know, we do it for you guys. Click another video, roll another blunt. You already know what it is. And as always, stay, stay lifted. lifted. Really, the only ways you can go about doing that, and I fucked it up already. There's a guy, I'm getting a fucking cramp. I'm fucking. I got a cramp, and I'm getting hit by this fucking coil. you. If you're not, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the button next to it if you live this kicking, huh? Because <laughs> some plants are gonna implement, uh, yeah, <laughs> headgear to uh, do that. Click over to, uh, to get Cannabis Lifestyle TV. Yeah.